Welcome back, everybody, to another YouTube video showcasing more of the Pico CTF 2022 Capture the Flag. I'm over here in my Kali Linux virtual machine. I am inside of a Kali Linux command line and terminal for us to be able to work with code as we need to. But I am, of course, in the Pico CTF 2022 game on picoctf.org. And we are on the fourth page now, moving into a forensics category challenge called Eavesdrop with a bit more solves than the previous couple of challenges, so we might have some better luck with this one. It says, download this packet capture and find the flag. And we're given this download packet capture here and we can go ahead go ahead and grab that link with a right click copy link address i'll move into the forensics category directory that we've made and i'll make a directory called eavesdropper for the name of this challenge for us to work in w get that down and now we of course we have a capture flag.pcap this is a pcap file uh, which means it's a packet capture file and we can work with it within wireshark we showcased Wireshark in a previous forensic video within this video series, so I'm going to just use Wireshark to open up this capture flag PCAP. I'll hit enter on this, and now we can see, oh, there are a handful of packets being displayed here, and notably, we have some DHCP requests, some ARP requests, and TCP connections. Now, the ARP requests are what I would consider normal traffic. Same thing with DHCP. With the TCP packets though, I'm kind of curious and interested in what all is going to be communicated because you, as you can see down below, there may very well be actual data or you know, maybe communication that's present and visible to us. This is, hey, how do you decrypt this file again? Uh, and clicking around some of these, you see a couple other chatter. Uh, so what I'm going to end up doing is I'm actually going to right click this and hit follow so I can follow the TCP stream right here. With that, I can see the communication and conversation done here. It says, hey, how do you decrypt this file again? It says, you're serious. It says, yeah, I'm serious. And then a response from the other individual, Psy, and then this uh, open SSL command. This is a command. This is something you could use within uh, your command line over on Linux and in Kali, etc. It says, okay, great. It says, let's use Discord next time. It's more secure. <laughs> it says, come on, no one knows who use a program like this, whatever. Hey, yeah, okay, could you transfer the file to me again? It says, okay, great, over 9002. It, and it says, yeah, listening, sent it, got it, you're unbelievable, blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to assume over port 9002 is where this file would have been sent. So we can keep track of this command. I'm going to right-click and copy this. And I'll go ahead and actually just slap it into my terminal. I'm going to create a new terminal here. I'm using Terminator, so I can just simply hit hey, right click and split horizontally or vertically. But uh, then I can zoom in on one specific uh, command here, window and pane here. I'll paste this in. Uh, let's go, looks like it's going to end up taking a input file based off of the DES uh, encryption scheme with a salt uh, taking out a file, make, this will make sure that's our output file, and the password or the key, super secret password one, two, three. I'm gonna hit enter on this just so it's in our uh, command history, but obviously I do not yet have the file.des3 actually created yet. But given the context clues from the packet capture, we could probably go ahead and determine, okay, if I actually add a new column, or if I edit columns here, could I maybe modify and actually add a column? I think that should be actually under column preferences. We could go ahead and add, if I use the plus icon, new call as a new column, and we'll change this to something like uh, the port. Uh, and I suppose the, can that type be something like, ooh, yeah, source port. So we'll actually name that something like source port. And let's do another for destination port or dest port. Change that type to over here, destination port. You can see at the very, very top. Okay, that should now be displayed. However, it is going to be, oh goodness. Edit columns, column preferences. Should I move these up? Can I do that? Will it let me? No. Okay, is the info column going to be taking all this? Can I resize column to width? Oh, I can specify how big I want this. Let's just make it like 40. There we go. So now I could see the source port and destination port present here. I'm gonna drag these over. There we go. And let's drag that over also to be by our source port. 
resize these as needed. And now we can see a little bit more of the communications and the reports. Uh, let's move that to beside destination and same thing by source here. So a bit easier to read. And with that, we could keep scrolling down and try to see, okay, where was the chatter over a destination port of 9002? I see it right here. And with that, we could probably, hey, follow the TCP stream. There is a salted file right here. The salted tells us, look, that can clue us in and tell us, look, this is, in fact, a uh, open SSL encrypted file. I'm going to change the show data as, and I'm going to make it raw. If I scroll all the way down here, I believe this will allow me to specify raw or UTF-8 or bytes or something. I'm just not seeing it. Is raw Okay, raw is at the very, very top, actually, because it's probably more common. And with that, we could go ahead and file save as. And in the current directory, I'm going to save this as file.des3. Hit save, and with that, we should be done carving out that specific file. What we could have done is actually gone into, like, hey, edit, or I think it's maybe file. Yeah, file has it. You can export objects. And with that, you might be able to specify, hey, if there were things uncovered or files retrieved based off of a specific pro protocol, like HTTP or SMB or TFTP, uh, it might actually allow Wireshark to help out and carve out those files for you. Uh, another cool trick is to use a command and utility called TCP flow. Uh, if you don't have that in your repository or you don't have that on your machine right now, you could probably go ahead and sudo apt install TCP flow. And if you were to run TCP flow tack R on a PCAP, like a capture flag dot PCAP, it'll end up trying to spit stuff out. It may or may not work. It may or may not get some wind errors, but you can see I have a lot more files created now, actually even present of, hey, what IP address sent what data to what host on what port. Uh, I only see one transfer sent to 9002. So if I actually take a look at this file, I'll run file on that. That tells us it is in fact open SSL encrypted data with a salted password, which coincidentally is the exact same as our file.ds3, open SSL encrypted data with salted password. Nice. With that, we could use the open SSL command that we ran. But if you want to do a little bit more digging on all the other conversations, again, running file on all of these that TCP flow might have been able to carve out, you could probably even see some of the chatter. Hey, let's cat out this. And there is, in fact, that communication. How do you decrypt this file again? And back and forth. That's only one direction, though, right? That's for the 9001 on a uh, source to a destination on a destination port but it wouldn't give us, okay, the communication in the other direction. That would have to come from the reverse. Reverse port, reverse port, source and destination, right? If I copy that, cat that out, you can see the response. Nice and easy. All right, with that said, we could quick and easy grab that open SSL decryption, paste that in as a command here, and did it actually do it it gave me a warning but let's check out the current files in my directory and i do have a file.txt if i run file on file.txt it is simply ascii text and given the small size of that file when it was encrypted i'm gonna have to assume that on its own is our flag nice so that simply says netcat um and i'm not sure what that lead speak is netcat is all bees i don't know what that's supposed to say in lead speak but anyway we have our flag we have completed that challenge we learned a couple new tricks and a couple new tools maybe tcp flow if you haven't used it before and open ssl to work with encrypted data um, there are a lot of arguments to open ssl things that you may not really need to keep in mind um, here was here's what we could do um, if we wanted to make some crazy wacky get flag strip we absolutely could but I don't know if we actually need to um, 
like, hey, have it do TCP flow to carve out the file, actually go ahead and get the information, blah, blah, blah. Not all that necessary. We could just save, hey, the final command as we knew it and then finish this. But we can go ahead and copy and paste and submit this flag. Nice and easy, a good forensics challenge done and in the books. And with that, we only have a couple challenges left on this page. But that's that. That was a little bit more fun uh, experimentation within Wireshark using tools like TCP flow and finding others. But ultimately, that was that video. That was that challenge. Hope you had some fun. Hope you learned something new. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, please do all those YouTube algorithm things. Like the video, comment, subscribe, anything to help the channel grow, help get these videos to more people. So there's more education, more free learning in cybersecurity. And I appreciate all of your support. Thanks so much, everybody. See you in the next video.